My name is Eva Sustaita. I'm the Student Development Specialist for Concurrent Enrollment. For those of you that don't know, um, I'm the one that processes the applications and works in the office. Um, the person doing the special programs is uh, Mr. Manuel Vega. And he's actually the one that takes care of all the distance learning and all the off-campus uh, things. And our director, um, Connie uh, Rosas Najera, who did the welcome this morning, okay? Okay, first of all, the purpose of the concurrent enrollment is to provide academically talented high school juniors and seniors with an opportunity to acquire university course credit and to introduce them to the total university experience while still attending high school. Um, a lot of people always ask us, um, is it only juniors and seniors? The way that we start is once the uh, sophomore has finished his term and we know that he's going to go on to his junior year, that's when we can start taking their applications and um, start getting them ready and prepped to start the concurrent enrollment program. On the transcript, it has to say that the person will be a junior the next coming year. That's how the person can start, okay? <coughs> Some of the benefits um, of concurrent enrollment is, of course, they get university credit. Okay, they, some of them can actually gain up to 43 hours of university credit while attending high school. Um, they get to have access to all the facilities, all the services that we actually offer on campus. There is a wide selection of cor uh, courses. In other words, any class that is open to an actual uh, university student, concurrent enrollment students can attend all of those classes. Okay, they do get dual credit, and by getting dual credit, um, they do uh, get to participate in the DAP, which is the Distinguished Achievement Program in your high schools. Okay, and uh, the last one, which we think is the most important one, is that the reduced cost is, is actually $50 per credit hour. So in other words, Regular high school or uh, college students pay 648 for one class. Our students pay only 150. Okay, aside from the books, but that's still reduced drastically. Now, one of the things that we want to mention to you that it is a kind of a cycle that we start off with the students. Um, we start off by um, getting their el eligibility criteria, then moving them on to the application process. They become special freshmen and then we repeat the cycle all over again. So that's one of the things that we want to emphasize. It is a cycle. We're always with them, guiding them all throughout the way. Okay. If uh, they have a 90 GPA or higher, they're automatically in. Or uh, if they get a 22 on their ACT or a 1030 on their SAT, that also uh, qualifies them to join the program. Now, um, this moves on the testing. If they meet the GPA requirement or the ranking requirement, they still have to test, but it doesn't mean that they need to get a 22 on their ACTs or a 1030 on their SATs. It just means that they need to be assessed so that we can have an idea of what they can take or not. On your booklets, I know that um, you guys have that pink sheet. It's uh, color-coded in our section, and it's uh, the TSI requirements. That one. If you, can you hold that one up just so they can kind of see that one, the light pink sheet. That one is uh, our table that we follow or that actually the university follows. So that's going to tell you if they earned a certain grade on their tax scores or their THEA scores, then that'll give them the opportunity to move on. The person or the student, if they get a, a high grade, uh, say in English, but they didn't meet the requirements for math, that doesn't mean they can't be in the program. It just means that they cannot take <coughs> that math course, the college algebra, but they can get credit in any other subjects. Once they uh, start maturing, they can retake exams and then eventually move on to take math courses. Okay. Another thing that we also want to emphasize is the reconsiders. Now, say the student doesn't have the test grade or they're not top 10%, but they do have borderline 88, 89 GPA. We do take those reconsiders into account. So everything is on an individual basis. If the student has 88.5, 89, uh, by all means, encourage them to apply because we can reconsider, we can let them in. Yes, ma'am, you have a question? The 90 GPA is only on the core. On the core classes, yes. Uh, that's a good point. Some of the high schools, they don't do their ranking or their GPAs until the last semester of the student's high school career. We, if there's no um, GPA... Illegal, I'm sorry? Isn't that illegal? Um, no, some of them don't actually don't put the GPA on the transcript until the very end or the ranking. So we actually take the core. It's up to the high school. If the counselor wants to average out the grades, we'll take the counselor's word for it. Or if they just submit us the transcript, we will actually average out the core classes. 
this is the application. Now, aside from this application, they also need to go online and do the applytexas.org, which actually would grant them to ad the admissions to go get into Pan Am. Okay, first they need to fill that out. Now, it's really important, those of you that have the GO centers and help them fill out the applications there, there's a question number 33, I believe, on the application that asks if the student is a high school student wanting to take uh, concurrent enrollment classes, they, they pick yes, because that is a filter for us and that'll put them in our group. Okay, that'll let us know for the billing and for everything that they are concurrent enrollment students. Then they fill out this and this is what they fill out for us. This application needs to get filled out, signed by the counselor, the principal, and the student's parents. We want to involve everybody to let them know what's going on, okay, so that nobody will say, well, we didn't know or, or anything like that. We just want to make everybody aware, all the parties. Now, some of the deadlines, um, for those of you interested in getting your sophomores involved, their deadline for the summer is March 5th, okay? So that's really important to remember. Um, those of you that have, a lot, like I know La Jolla, La Sara, far distance schools, if you know the deadline is March 5th, just call us ahead of time, a week before or two days before. We'll actually go out there and pick up a stack of applications if you have them. I know that some of you are far away, so, and that goes for any school. Yes, ma'am. So the students can begin taking classes this summer? This summer, yes. Mm -hmm. And that goes also for the seniors or juniors that are going to be seniors the next year. They can actually start in the summer and their deadline would be March 5th as well. Okay, so just remember that date. Now the next um, step that we go is that would classify them as a special freshman. When they become special freshmen, they have to go attend an orientation, which is that is for all college students. But since they're going to be joining the concurrent enrollment program, once they attend that orientation, that's it. They don't have to do it again. It is a $15 fee, one time only. And actually what it is, it's, it's going to help the student know what's going to go on on campus. It's going to give them, uh, they're going to eat uh, lunch there. They're going to have uh, welcome activities. They're going to get a tour, all kinds of things. So they're going to get to get a feel of the actual uh, campus and what it's like. Um, another thing. During, on the day of orientation, we are there, uh, Mr. Vega and myself, to advise the students on what courses to take. Now, if you also refer to your book, there's um, a light blue sheet, which is actually our core classes. We always focus on our core for our students, and the reason we do that is because if you follow our core, the core... It's green. I'm sorry, it's green. If you follow our core classes, those core classes are going to be valid in any public institution in the state of Texas. So if they want to transfer out to UT Austin, uh, Kingsville, after they graduate, these core classes will um, transfer with them. Okay, that's why we tell the students, <coughs> stick to your core. Another reason why we do it is a lot of students can go through their college career and change their major three, four times. So we tell them the core, you need it in any major that you're going to go into, stick to the core. We're always there to advise the students in, in the right path, okay? Um, another thing that they do in orientation is they actually get their uh, UTPA username and password. And for those of you returning, we did do away with rack numbers, so those are no longer needed. That's, they would only need their username and password to log on and, and register for classes. And they would also get their ID and register that same day f during orientation for their classes. Okay. Now the other thing is um, this on the cycle, it, we talk about academic success. This is returning. Every semester the student is required to have advisement. Okay, so if they're sophomores or beginning juniors, they, they attend this summer. If they want to come back in the fall and take classes with us, then we, we actually put a hold on their name until they return back for advisement. And we conduct the returning student advisements. What we do is we print out their transcripts. If they have any AP credit scores that they've gotten, we put that on, on their advisement sheets. Any um, CLIP classes that they've done, anything like that, we put that on their advisement or any updated test scores so that to tell them, okay, you can move on to the next step. We lift their hold and we still guide them to take the, the following classes that are needed. Okay, so that's actually what takes place in the returning advisement. Now, the student, in order to continue, must also be in good standing. So the student needs to have a C or better. I know that in the university, um, a D is actually passing, but for us, it's a C. And the reason we do that is that we don't want to hurt the student once they graduate high school financially or anything like that. We don't want them to be in bad standing with uh, the university. So we actually 
ha um, have to have maintain a C average or better. Okay, so moving on, summer housing. Mr. Vega, we'll talk about summer housing and the distance learning. I'm Mr. Vega. I'm in charge of the distance learning program and uh, summer housing uh, acceptance program for the scholarship for summer housing. Okay, under the distance learning program, uh, the requirements is that your school is at least 15 miles out, okay? All the other requirements that are required for acceptance to the program have to be met before a student participates into the distance learning program. Everything that is required for uh, concurrent enrollment must be met plus the requirement of the distance for distance learning, okay? Okay, distance learning, what it is, it's similar to what we're going through right now. Okay, as for say, I'm the instructor and I'm giving a lecture in the classroom. I'm being video recorded live, being streamed to the different high schools in the valley that are participating in our program. At this moment, we've got three of La Jolla schools, uh, Rio Grande, Valley View, San Benito, taking classes uh, under distance, uh, the distance learning program. Our classes for distance learning, we try to stay out of the school schedule, as for say regular school hours. Okay, our classes start, we have a classes start at 7.45 and go till 9 o'clock in the morning. Then we have evening classes which go from 4 to 5.15 according to, to, to set days. If it's uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, it's longer hours. If it's MWF, it's shorter, shorter span uh, of time for class. That's the distance learning program. Okay. How many? How many? I see a lot of new faces here. Okay. Uh, I deal a lot with the distance learning uh, with the distance schools, and I don't see faces that I recognize from from distance learning. Who in here is more than 15 miles away, home district? What school? Pace. Brownsville Pace. West Laco? Harlingen. Harlingen. La Sara. Okay, we were there last night. You're coming on board. La Sara, uh, it's been a new school, a new high school that uh, was incorporated when? Last two years ago? Two years ago, it became a high school. Okay, they, they were under the Will Camp uh, Co-op, which uh, they were, their mother school was Raymondville. Uh, what whole school was Raymondville, something similar to that. They went to an independent high school now. So uh, last night we made arrangement with them. Uh, we set up the program exactly as I explained so that uh, we can uh, do distance learning with them uh, this uh, summer one. Okay, any questions on distance learning? No questions, okay. And then we go into the summer housing. Summer housing, same requirements for the program, except for summer housing, a student has to write a letter of intent to participate in summer housing. A uh, student writes uh, hardship, distance, whatever. It's, it's for say, show the interest in the student in participating in summer housing. Summer housing is for students that are 30 miles out or better. Okay, we have had accepted students that are closer than the 30 miles. And the same thing goes, is that they write a letter, a hardship letter stating, you know, whatever hardship is their case. And we look at it, even though students that or 30 miles out or better have priority over students that are at a, at a closer distance. Okay, the scholarship covers uh, room and board at the dorm and our, at our, at our uh, campus here. Uh, it covers, uh, it's about a $1,200 scholarship per student and uh, there's regulations and stuff that apply, parent contacts, parent application, the whole deal. For, before the student is accepted into the program, okay? Are they still using the old dorms? Uh, no, our students, our students participate into the, to the new housing. 
but the others are being used also? I have no idea. Is the other dorms used? I, uh, I really don't. Haxo Hall was going to be closed for low week time. It was okay. low students. Okay. We're using them for, for weekend for camps. Okay. Okay. Learning frameworks, is that one of the courses okay. they can take? It, well, it, well, if a student in, in, enrolled in distance learning take all core courses, okay? We have a degree plan. We advise students to go into the core courses. Good question there, Joe. Students that come on, on house, one of the required courses is college frameworks, okay? One of the required courses on campus is college frameworks for all students participating in our program. And I think it's, it's mandatory by the university. All freshman students have to go through college frameworks. Any other questions? Okay, 30 miles out with a letter of intent for participation in the program. Yes, ma'am. Uh, if I'm correct, I think the application would be online April 15th. For summer housing, what? March 12th. March 12th for summer housing. Okay? And it's a first come, first serve. Okay? Uh, I'm thinking we're having 38, 30 scholarships for summer one available. Um, another thing that, that also the school determines is the date for the student to pay the school. Now this is where uh, our communication comes hand in hand because we don't like to be the type during uh, advisement to say we don't know, let, uh, ask your school that. Okay, so the more information you can give us the better. Five minutes. Okay. Uh, the more information you can give us, the better um, it actually is. Okay, so if you can give, provide us with a list of classes that you consider dual, that would be great so that we can tell registrate when they're registering, these are the classes that your school is going to count as dual. Okay, that would be help us out tremendously and as well as uh, when their payment is due because we can advise the students you're going to have to pay your school at the beginning. We like to help out our students as much as we possibly can. Okay, um, some of the costs that the students have to pay, of course, their uh, textbooks, class materials, uh, their parking permit if they're going to be driving, and their orientation fee, which is uh, $15 of uh, orientation fees. Okay. Um, when Mr. Vega was talking, I passed out a, a sample of a report, an enrollment report, and I know that um, a, lot of, a lot of you have been getting this. A lot of the returning uh, counselors have been getting these. We also asked uh, for your patience on this. Um, we recently lost our coordinator, so it's two men, army, with all the schools, okay? So I know that usually we would send them three times a week. Now we're, we're actually trying to do once a week and uh, we just passed the census date. So be very patient with us. Another thing that we added on that enrollment report is a uh, dual status credit uh, along with your staff initials. And what that tells us is if the student is classified as a non-resident but they're taking a dual class, all you have to do is check off yes. And that will reduce the cost back to 150 because uh, dual residents would actually have to pay the $1,200 that it costs them to attend or for one class. Okay, so we also ask for your participation in this when we fax or email you the reports, just fax them back as soon as possible so that we know that the student is, uh, if there are non residents, that they are taking a dual credit class. Okay. Um, Another one of the offices that we work for, if you guys saw when you were checking in that office right behind the check-in counter, that is actually our testing office. And um, we, provide, we work a lot closely together with them because we can help you guys provide uh, testing for your students. Uh, the THEA, I know they actually go out there to the campuses. If you have 30 students wanting to take the THEA at one time, the proctor will actually go out there and um, handle the Thea. Okay, so that's pretty much it. There, and yes? How much is the Thea if you send out 30? Is it the extra $10 for the quick fee or the direct or Yeah, the extra 10, yes. <laughs> what that actually does though is just it just allows them to take it at one time and entering school hours so that they don't have to come on a Saturday or anything like that. Okay, does anybody have any questions so far on the program? No? We're good. Um, there's a contact information sheet. I know I see some familiar faces, but I don't know a lot of you. Um, if you are interested in the program or if you are a new counselor with a district that we already have, there are contact information sheets that you can fill out and turn in at the end of uh, the day to us so that way we can keep it updated. I don't think I have some of yours on there.